The previous pivot lab was mass changes during chemical reactions, where we looked at sort of the logic of what occurs during a chemical reaction and studying the fact that mass is conserved. Now, today's lab is going to be instead doing the actual numbers and looking at what we started with, what we have left um, when we're finished with the reaction, and what occurred in the reaction. And we're going to be using hydrates. Now, a hydrate is a hydrated salt. And that means that there are waters that are physically inside the ionic compound. It's still a nice solid, but they do have waters on the inside of it. Um, the, how we name these is we name them by the name of the compound, followed by the number of waters using the Greek uh, prefixes. So mono, di, tri, et cetera. And they're going to ask you some questions on how to do this. If you want to continue on at any point in time with the lab, you're going to have to submit your answers. I'm going to submit wrong ones because why not? And so we're going to do the actual experiment. So to do the actual experiment, you're going to press the start button. And you're not going to need any tools in this reaction. It's just going to go for you. Now what you're going to need to do is keep track of what everything weighs. So when you start out this reaction, make sure that you're keeping track of the mass of everything involved. So I would advise stopping and recording the mass as you go. So one point. 586. Now we're going to take our um, metal tray with the compound in it and we're going to put it over here on top of the Bunsen burner. And as we do this, the color of the compound is going to change. It's going to change because the reaction occurred. All right, so again, pause the video so that you can record the mass of this. And they're going to take and they're going to heat it up again to make sure that the reaction is actually finished. And see if anything else occurs, and to continue to do this until the reaction is complete. The reaction will be complete when there's going to be no more change in the mass. All right, so what are you going to do with this? Well, you started out with the mass of your copper compound, and you wrote that down, and then the reaction occurred. Mass went down. So make sure you record your values as you go. So you're going to turn in whatever the mass is that decreased here. So I'm going to pick a number and I'm going to submit it and then we're going to ask the question of why did the mass decrease well you're going to answer that and continue and then once you've got the mass that decreased well if we think about this the only way that this could take and change mass would be if the waters that were inside of that ionic compound were released when the heat was added so your job is to figure out how many moles of water were released what happens when you have what is you have left and then what the ratio of the waters to the chemical to the copper sulfate are going to be. When you're done with that, you're going to do another reaction. It's going to be similar, and you're going to identify the hydrated salts, how many moles of water you have in each as a function of the experiment that you're doing. You're going to look at these and see how much the mass went down and therefore how many water molecules were released as the reaction occurred. And then you're going to finally look at some interesting results.